Understanding your rights under the Manufactured Home Community Rights Act. What is a manufactured or mobile home? A mobile home or a manufactured home is a structure in which people reside. It is factory assembled, transported to the site, and affixed to the utilities and services there. Once it's affixed, it becomes a permanent residence. What is a mobile home park or a manufactured home community? In order to be considered a park or a community, there must be at least three or more manufactured or mobile homes on the property. These homes are owned by the persons who reside in them. They pay a fee for the lot, often termed lot rent. After a home becomes part of a park or community, can the homeowner be forced to remove it from the site? Yes. However, because moving a mobile home can be very expensive, often costing several thousands of dollars, Pennsylvania has created a special law, the Manufactured Home Community Rights Act, which governs the circumstances under which the park owner can force the homeowner to move and how they must proceed in order to make the homeowner remove the home. When can the park owner evict the homeowner? The park owner may evict a homeowner or refuse to renew the lease for four reasons. A, non-payment of rent, B, a second or subsequent violation of the rules within a six-month period, C, a change in the use of the land that the park is on, or D, a termination of the park. If the homeowner doesn't pay rent, can the park owner deny them access to the home without going to court? No, the park owner must go to court. There is no right to what is called self-help eviction. Is the park owner required to tell the homeowner that they are going to ask a judge to evict them, or can they simply file a complaint in eviction? Prior to filing any eviction proceeding, the park owner must notify the homeowner in writing of the particular breach or violation of the lease or park rules by certified or registered mail. In the case of non-payment of rent, the notice must state that an eviction proceeding may be commenced if the homeowner does not pay the overdue rent within 20 days from the date of service, if the notice is given on or after April 1st and before September 1st, or within 30 days if the notice is given on or after September 1st and before April 1st. In the case of a breach of the lease or violation of the park rules, other than non-payment of the rent, the written notice must describe the particular breach or violation that the homeowner is facing, which is the grounds for eviction by the landowner. Do the same notice rules apply if the homeowner pays all overdue rent but gets behind on the rent a second time? If an additional non-payment of rent occurs within six months, the park owner may immediately start the eviction process. This process is started by sending the homeowner an eviction notice by personal service or posting on the door. And the homeowner will only get a 15-day notice to vacate on or after April 1st and before September 1st or a 30-day notice on or after September 1st and before April 1st. If the homeowner does not move, the park owner may then go to the magistrate, also known as the MDJ, and start the eviction process. What if the homeowner violates the park rules or violates the lease a second time? If the homeowner violates a park rule or lease provision within six months of the first warning notice, the park owner must send an eviction notice by personal service meaning the notice must be hand-delivered directly to you or by posting it on the door, which gives the homeowner 30 days to move. The notice must be three months if the homeowner has a lease for a term of one year or more. In addition, the eviction must be sent within 60 days from the date of the second violation. If the homeowner does not move within the specified time, the park owner may go to the magisterial district judge and file a legal action. What kind of defenses can be used to stop an eviction for violating park rules? A park owner cannot sue to evict you for a rules violation if you can prove that the rules are not enforced with respect to other homeowners in your park. The park owner cannot sue to evict you for participating in tenant associations or exercising the right to your freedom of speech. And a park owner cannot sue you on a second violation if more than 60 days have passed since the violation have occurred. 
Other defenses include retaliatory evictions for exercising rights or arguing that the rules are not fair and reasonable, reasonably related to health, safety, and upkeep, not arbitrary or capricious, included in the lease, posted in the community. What kind of defenses can be used to stop an eviction for non-payment of rent? In addition to presenting proof that the rent was paid, either through copies of receipts or canceled checks, the homeowner can also defeat an eviction action if they can prove that the park owner failed to notify them of the violation in writing and by certified or registered mail. A simple hand-delivered or regular mail delivery notice is not acceptable service. For this reason, it's extremely important that all notices and envelopes be kept. In addition, if the mobile home park supplies residents with water, sewer, or other utilities, or services such as access roads, it is responsible for maintaining them according to state and local regulations. Failure of the park owner to do so gives the homeowners the right to withhold lot rent until the problem is fixed or to make repairs and deduct the cost from future lot rent or move from the park with no further obligation to pay lot rent to the park owner. The park owner must tell the homeowner in writing the amount of rent and all service charges, fees, or assessments the homeowner will be responsible for at the time the homeowner moves into the park. If any rent, fees, or other charges were not disclosed in writing, this can be raised as a defense. Can the park owner take away my rights under the Manufactured Home Community Rights Act? No, all rights and responsibilities that are provided to you are binding on you as well as the park owner by the MHCRA. And the lease cannot change these rights, nor does any park rule have the authority or the ability to change or modify the rights that are given to you by the statute.